My talk today is religious liberty and social policy, rethinking spiritual values and history education. Now, first of all, I would like to uh, say that uh, this is not going to be a legal lecture uh, like the ones that might be given by uh, uh, Professor Sat Salim Paruki or, or Siti Kasim. And uh, it is not really also a scholarly lecture like you would expect coming from uh, Professor James Chin. Um, this is more a, a lecture by a concerned Muslim and a concerned Malaysian or a responsible Malaysian uh, with regard to seeing how our country has uh, uh, not developed very well uh, the last 30 years um, after uh, creating a nation with a lot of hope and aspiration. Now, just barely a few years ago, we have shown uh, some of these uh, incidents uh, in which I had concluded that an ill-defined religious liberty and a narrow-minded social policy has brought Malaysia to the brink of total destruction in nation building. We have the issue of the China Babi. We have the issue of the Mufti Pahang and the RUU 355, or what we call the Kafir Harbi issue, as well as this China issue. Now, my analysis of events it's simply to see who responds to this event. Were there any academics from uh, Islamic universities that would want to say anything? Is there any academics from say centers of social harmony? Is there any uh, politicians of worth who might want to say something? Would there be another religious leader that would counter the narrative or the toxic narrative of Islam that is being portrayed? And what I have noticed is that much of it has been silenced. And when I look at the, uh, say, Friday sermons, nothing has been said about such issues. And when I listen also, hopefully, to so-called progressive Islamic NGOs, still nothing much that can be discerned. And from this, uh, I would say that uh, we are in a, in, a, in a very, very dangerous situation. And um, I disagree with uh, some uh, centers of uh, education or centers of research in public universities who says that we are still okay. Uh, we don't have any people, you know, Malays China, burning Chinese house or, 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 or burning mosques or burning churches and things like that. And my response has always been that I'm not going to wait until such things to conclude that we are already uh, a a failed nation, I would just say like that. Uh, not because that there are no burnings or killings or things uh, of that nature, but the silence that follows. The silence about uh, someone uh, important destroying shrines, uh, the silence of uh, hitting someone just because of uh, issue of uh, uh, sexual orientation like transgender, and also a silence relating to a mother's love for children. This silence is to me the most poisonous uh, aspect of uh, what the nation has come to. Now, my message today is that the religious institutions, all the religious institutions need to inculcate a rethinking of uh, spiritual values uh, towards nation building and global coexistence. Uh, many times when we listen to religious lectures, they like to talk about how you would better your rituals and your personal relationship with God. And, and these are fine things, but uh, I think uh, we need to step up and, 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 and relook at the message and the real lessons of spirituality about uh, treating the other. And, and so this would be something akin to uh, developing a curriculum or a, a method of appreciating the idea of nation building as well as global coexistence and not just with living within the same religious adherence. Now, religious institutions need to re-educate 
a history narrative of shared responsibility and non-conflict in the old idea of religious war. What I'm saying here is that uh, we must uh, re-educate our uh, children uh, about an alternate historical narrative where certain religious institutions have already inculcated the idea of a, of a, of a war mentality uh, where the other is always the enemy and not just the enemy, but the enemy uh, like you are in a battlefield. And, and this is a very poisonous and a very toxic narrative. And it is not something that would be very helpful at all. And in fact, very destructive in a nation building construct. Now, since social policies are governed by a narrow construct of a single race and single dominant religious authority, it is up to ordinary citizens to bring change and rebuild Malaysia. Now, my position about 20 years of writing have come to this. Number one, I believe it is up to us and not to political parties and not to this institutions that we are paying taxes for their salaries. It is up to us because when we try to change the political parties and the civil institutions, what we say is usually used against us and it's deepening the divide between us. So we need we need to we need to do this ourselves. And and I have already mentioned many of these aspects that we can do ourselves in many of my writing. Now, one of the things that I have written about, I have said that we need to um, give a chance to Sabah and Sarawak to lead Malaysia and change the narrative of what has been uh, uh, taken up for almost 60 years about the uh, race and religious dominance. In the early days, this race and religious uh, special situation of special privilege uh, has worked quite well in terms of our social engineering. But I think it is now taken a different turn about not being something of a, a special consideration, but more of a dominating influence that disrupt much of our uh, multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-faith uh, existence as a nation. And so this needs to be changed and it needs to be changed by us uh, through our own effort and, and not necessarily through uh, the effort of fighting against uh, a, a political party. I'm not saying that we don't do that, but I'm saying that much energy must be utilized in a different manner because we have been doing the same thing for the last how many 20 or 30 years and I have seen that the result is not going anywhere. When something happens with the Christian community, the Christian community will always answer. We have not changed that. We should change to, well, let's have another group of uh, Malaysian to address the issue that has been thrown against the Christian community. So this is something which we need to consider if we are to have any hope at all to be a nation. Now, this is the things that I will be talking about, about uh, our inherited religious liberty, our inherited social policy from the perspective of a citizen, not from the legal or from the scholarly perspective. Um, then I will go on to, to, to talk about the four aspects of how I think uh, we can start the change uh, with regard to the issue of uh, religious liberty as well as social policy within our own effort. Now, the rationale for this kind of approach is that uh, this is an approach that calls for all citizens, meaning all citizens uh, in a democracy in this country, we are responsible for whatever uh, a responsible aspect that we have uh, within our own family or our own um, people that we have influence. And, uh, this is because our civil service is already tainted with a single dominant race and dominant religious narrative. And we see how, or we saw how Pakatan Harapan struggle to make the changes uh, with the entrenched civil institution of this one race, one religious narrative uh, dominance. 
Our politicians make use of our racial and religious historical baggage towards their own selfish objective. Now, on this aspect, I have always maintained that it is not the politician that is making the trouble for our country. After 20 years of observing Malaysians, our friends, our relatives, I have come to the conclusion that it is us, ourselves, who are in the dark about each other, about uh, having this mistrust. And these are used by certain opportunistic politicians and, and, and used as a, as, a, as a rallying call for them uh, to get votes and to be in power. Now, I am suggesting that we citizens should sidestep the political powers and this historical baggage, and we should start anew uh, with a new generation, with our children. If we have to formulate a summer school, if we have to formulate some gathering or at retreats, we need to do this. And I have thought very uh, deeply on this aspect because I do not see that we will be heading for any change. Even if there is a, a change of government uh, in GE 15, we will be repeating something of what will be happening, what had happened with the uh, GE 14 and, and, and how the Pakatan Harapan uh, was in power. We, we, we may think that we may do a better job, but how can you do a better job even though you are committed, even though you are passionate, when you have an entrenched civil institution and you have an infrastructure of religious institution that, that has not changed very much. And this is something that will be a total hindrance to whatever good uh, things that needs to be done. So we must rebuild our new Malaysia as the motto, our country is our responsibility. No one else, not PKR, not the AP, not, not Pakatan, not Barisan National certainly, and not all these other uh, uh, so-called political powers. We are putting too much hope and all these uh, considerations on political parties, but very little on how we ourselves can change. And the Sarawak Initiative is a perfect example of that. And I was mentioning that it needs to be documented, uh, all the lectures, and it should be in all the various languages that we can translate it into, Malay, in the language of uh, Kadazan or Daya or whatever, we, we need to have it uh, there with a summary of the lessons from all these lectures that has been given. And we can then leave a legacy for the next generation. We could even have uh, the Sarawak Initiative can also have workshop with young people, with young uh, university students. If the university or the public university is not allowing it, then we figure something out. We have it outside. And this is the way forward for us to actually uh, come across. And if we have a very friendly government, like perhaps the Sarawak government or the Sabah government, and say that we could start and restart Malaysia from Sabah and Sarawak. I had once uh, talked to a senior politician and said that, look, if Pakatan Harapan wins, why don't we give the prime ministership and the deputy prime ministership to Sabah and Sarawak? It's been 60 years and none of the Sabah or Sarawak uh, politician have had a chance to become the prime minister of this country. And uh, why I had said that was because I wanted the narrative of the one race and one religious dominating or dominant or dominance to be changed to all race and all religion. And this is something which uh, uh, many Sarawakians say that they are proud of in their, in their, in their own uh, nation, okay. I don't say state. Eh? I said nation. Eh? So um, this three nation partnership of Malaya, Sabah, and Sarawak needs to be kickstart uh, from uh, the uh, Kuching or from uh, Kota Kinabalu. I think this is how I'm seeing it. Now um, the evidence of this power shift uh, in which. What I'm saying is that uh, we citizens must uh, take charge. When we look at the ISIL issue, the Rome Statute, uh, when Pakatan Harapan put up these uh, uh, issues, and then the WhatsApp and the social media, uh, I saw from my own relatives, from my own so-called friends, and uh, it had exploded. 
and the ceramah from the mosque have also become uh, the the power to change the mindset uh, is no longer in the cabinet office, but it is now on the ground. And uh, the Pakatan Harapan had to reverse their decisions on all this or, or on these two issues. Worse and my my uh, worst nightmare was when public universities uh, put up the Congress Marwah Melayu. And uh, I know of the Malay uh, single based and single uh, religious dominance uh, in public universities since the Islamic Reformation of the 1980s. But I did not know it was to that extent where even so-called academics have a small a mind or such a narrow mindedness and uh, into their into their into their minds as well as their hearts uh, in relation uh, to sharing the nation with others and they uh, also they had also uh, strengthened the one race one religion narrative as like the political parties that have been staying in power the gawi issue also showed uh, the same uh, situation. Uh, first, saying that it is not a religious thing, it is a Bahasa Malaysia thing. But then, uh, the Arab cannot be written in Jawi. Other things are, can be written and should be written in Jawi. And so, this is something which is a, a very, a very strange uh, situation. But I guess it's not strange in this country. The social media and public university used to spread this war narrative of racial and religious mistrust. Um, why I say this, some say, well, no, we don't have the universities doing that. I'm sorry, we have thousands of professors and we have specific professors that can talk about religion better than I, but why is it that I'm the one of the very few to talk about the issue of the shrine, the issue of the Bible. Why is it only people like myself and perhaps uh, one or two others who are not uh, uh, university professors? And, and, and this means uh, that they have somehow uh, be part of the uh, conservative narratives. Religious institutions are willing bystanders. We can see that. I can see, and as I said, I, I read a lot of uh, uh, Friday sermons and I can tell that the narrative uh, there uh, is more of a, of a single race and single religious narrative. More moderates in parliament does not guarantee a centrist policies because this is, this is a fact. Now, our inherited religious liberty, now I, 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 as I said, I'm not a scholar in this area uh, to be citing uh, uh, policy papers or, 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 or laws. I'm just picking up something that I have seen. For instance, a single dominant religious authority with the people's money and political power taxes uh, used to actually enhance one single religion or religious authority, while others are, are something that has to be financed by the communities. Kerukun uh, Negara with the percayaan kepada Tuhan as the first principle, but not really defined very well. Uh, what about those who do not believe in God? And one deputy minister said, everybody must believe in God because our Rukun Negara says that. So uh, an education system that disallows other religions in national curriculum. So Muslims have to go to study Islam in order to become a human being. Uh, and non-Muslims have to study something called moral studies. Uh, and, and both of these are contradicting each other and they don't meet at the center. And uh, so, so an isolationist attitude is being given uh, to one group of uh, students. Total isolation of sharing values across religions in religious sermons. Now, of course, in the early days of Merdeka, we wanted to be having peace. And so we say, okay, your religion, you, you speak about your religion, uh, uh, other religions, you know, they don't mix and things like that. Well, uh, I don't think that's a very healthy way because uh, we have a whole group of one kind of religious adherent growing up, listening to sermons and, 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 and drama and, and uh, lectures, totally isolated from, from the others. And, and 
if you isolate yourself like that, then it is easy uh, for people to cry wolf and to, to start uh, having um, a kind of a, a narrative that is uh, uh, antagonistic uh, to each other. And so um, a single party allowed to use religion as a political ideology. Before this, I was an, uh, an Islamic reformist and I did not like what Mahathir said, why should party Islam from Malaysia use Islam? You know, and I was uh, disagreeing with him because Islam is an ideology of social and politics. That was the time that I, I was young and I believed in it. But now I agree with Mahathir in that sense that uh, we should not be using it. And if we are going to use it, then are we going to expect a party Christian from Malaysia or party Hindu from Malaysia or party Buddha from Malaysia? I mean, will that cause a lot of problems? And I'm sure it will. But allowing one particular party to have the name of Islam attached to its uh, um, um, entity is, is something that needs to be uh, readdressed. A law enforcement and judiciary dominated by single race and religion, which results in law on insult to religion that seems to work only one way. Now, I'm not, not a legal expert. I just seem to see that when, when someone is accused of insulting one religion, then the law takes very fast action. But when the opposite occurs, the law seems to drag its feet or, or, or seems to just, you know, fell into a hole and, 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 and it doesn't go anywhere. And this is something of how we, we, we have our so-called religious liberty. It's okay for one group to say bad things about uh, other religions, but it's not okay for others to, well, it's not okay in that sense of uh, unwritten rule. A university education that allows one religion to become several universities. Uh, university Islam Antarabangsa, University Science Islam Malaysia. So, um, well, and we expect a university Christian in Malaysia and a university uh, Daya in Malaysia and, and, and all that. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, I'm all right if we can have those things. But will the public or the single race uh, which dominates uh, will allow such things? And, and, and I think if, uh, if we're going to have it, then let's have it. If we're not going to have it, then let's not have it at all. But just having one party with that name and two universities with a similar name, uh, I think um, it's not very healthy. I'm not against it, but let's have uh, others also in that, in that manner. An MPU subject curriculum that has no inspiring teachers and syllabus. I haven't done much research in this, but judging by the statements made by graduates and, and I too having uh, students uh, uh, in the universities, I, I don't think they have good teachers okay? because the subject is taught in a manner of what we call melepas batuk di tangga or, or, or bena tak bena, you know, something that as long as they have lah, uh, that kind of thing, which is very wrong. This is the only subject that's going to turn you into human. And if it is not a good subject, then take it off. Replace it with the sustainable development goals of, uh, of United Nations. I think that it would be better uh, uh, instead of keep harping on the same uh, subject curriculum. The Minister of Religious Affairs that does not visit or care about other religions except one. Uh, he never even go to church, never even go to a Buddhist temple to, to listen to Charama. I mean, this, this is. By the, by the Christians and Hindus and, 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 and Buddhists, and yet uh, it only visit mosques and, and, and only one, one particular religion. The rise of religious conservatism after a single religious reformation movement, which is the Islamic reformation movement uh, that happened, and, 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 and I know quite well because I was, as I said, part of it. Now, our inherited social policy seems to come from a dasar kebudayaan kebasaan that does not give equal standing to uh, all heritage a safe one. It says that one particular race and one particular religion uh, must be uh, taken into consideration. Others uh, can also be lah, uh, if you want. Okay. I think for us to start with that uh, for the first 20, 30 years is fine. But I think we need to, to revisit this and give uh, 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 respect uh, and also honor to all religion, all faith, all cultures, all heritage, even though the culture of heritage is owned only by 50,000 orang asli, 
we need to respect that and we need to give it due consideration and due uh, honor. A rukun negara that is ill defined as sopanan dan kesusilaan. What is this kesopanan and what is this kesusilaan? How does this get into the spiritual values and how does it get into our our code of ethics? It's just about smiling and and cursing in your heart. And that, 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 this is not uh, uh, something that is good. The preamble of liberal coexistence in Rukun Negara was never emphasized. When I was in standard three or primary three, I entered a competition uh, of Rukun Negara. And the only thing that I had to memorize was the statement, Maka kami rakyat Malaysia berikrar akan something, something, something. And then the five uh, principles. And I didn't win. But then the point here is that the preamble was never given to me to memorize only the part uh, uh, that is ill-defined. A ministry of unity does not understand the acceptance or compassion and heritage sharing and the idea of interdependence of race relations. We can see also rise of housing development and township for single race and religious adherence like uh, area of Bangi, area of Saujana Impian. Once we had 60 Malay students as our tuition class for English. And, and when I said to practice speaking English with non-Malays, none of them had any non-Malay friends. And when I asked the parents, none of the parents have any non-Malay friends. So uh, this is something which we need to look at. An education curriculum in schools and universities that emphasizes careers in industry and not a holistic human entity. I mean, this one, uh, ours is an industry-based education, point blank. And just hoping to, to, to human in terms of uh, religion and, 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 and moral studies, which is not really tested and, and, and emphasized that much. So I think we look at the uh, conflicts that have happened, the Bible burning, the Ramadan the toilet issue. I mean, over the course of 20 years, you got something like more than 20 incidents that I have uh, documented very carefully looking at what happened and who says uh, or who had responded in order to uh, ease the situation or to, to lower the temperature. And, and, and significantly, I said silence among those that are supposed to say something, uh, the academics as well as the uh, religious institution uh, is not there. Now, I come now to the, 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 the final part, which is uh, the four uh, ways of how I think we should move on in terms of this uh, aspect of discussion. Uh, the first one uh, is something which I am doing at the moment with a group of people. We are trying to define uh, the uh, spiritual values from uh, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Baha'ism, and, and, and various religions, and to come up with a book that has three uh, values. Uh, of nation building. And for instance, uh, the values of helping others. Helping others, regardless of they are from your own adherence, is a core in, 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 in high spiritual enlightenment. When in fact, a lot, as I said, has only been emphasizing on rituals and personal relationships with God. But in my own personal study of religion, uh, uh, helping others is a very, very fundamental core it is about not identifying with yourself. It's not being selfish. And, and this is a core in, in, in a higher spiritual attainment. But many people think they have to spend thousands and thousands of ringgit for pilgrimage and also spend lots of time in houses of worship in order to attain uh, this kind of uh, high uh, uh, spirituality. Humility, meaning, meaning even though I'm a Muslim, even though I'm a Christian, it doesn't mean that... Uh, uh, everything is okay and I will go directly into heaven. I mean, uh, God does not say something like, uh, okay, you're already uh, in this uh, religion, so that's, that's fine. Your way is quite clear. When in fact, it's about the deeds and the thoughts and the words that we say is something which is actually uh, will get to me. Uh, Imam Ghazali in his book, uh, Ihya al muddin says in the Kitab uh, Bencana Lisa, uh, your, uh, uh, the prophet says that your, your, your tongue and drive you into hellfire. So you can have your prayers, you have your pilgrimage, you have your rituals, but your tongue can drive you into hellfire. According dignity to all individuals in honoring 
uh, each other's uh, heritage, uh, cultures, and, 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 and values. Uh, this is very important because we live in differences. We do not teach our children about the value of differences. We teach that, okay, like we can tolerate or we can just uh, uh, at arm's length uh, put up with differences. When in fact, differences are something that needs to be uh, embraced and also accepted. The uh, idea of history, history is being taught in a manner of a, of a general narrative of how the nation come about, but we do not have a complementary history of uh, the different ethnic groups, the different cultures of this country, save one culture and one religion. How did the Christians come to develop this nation through their schools, through their education? How did the Buddhists through their, their community work help many people regardless of their, of their religion. We need to know this. We need to understand this and teach to our children in Bahasa Melayu, in Bahasa Inggris, in other Bahasa. And so that they know each religion has a, uh, a contribution. And so narratives like religious wars need to be redefined as political wars of uh, selfishness and ignorance. Tragedies like Metatin should not be a point, finger pointing aspect but it should be a shared failure, meaning all of us must be shared uh, uh, the embarrassment and the, and, the, uh, and the shameful acts uh, that all of us must feel and that we should not have something like this happen again. We should also have a heritage of art, culture, and faith that is given equal standing and, and being taught uh, by uh, our curriculum. And if not by the public education, it is also by so, uh, coming to the last two slides, uh, our education system is totally trapped in a <clears throat> conservatism, uh, ignorance, uh, from kindergarten even to PhD when I examine a student. <coughs> we need to have uh, after the documentation of the books on spiritualities and nation building, I wanted to also put up a book on complementary histories of communities faith on nation building. And then we can have a workshop with uh, our own children and uh, also with the universities outside of the public universities, if they're not allowing it. And so we will have uh, other things <clears throat> that we can do on ourselves, by ourselves. Finally, we should Try to set up even a, a school, international curriculum, and I'm happy to see that Sarawak government has done that uh, to sponsor six or seven um, international curriculum. <clears throat> because I think our curriculum needs to be global rather than uh, di bawah tempurung, very narrow to our just nation because uh, the world has already opened up. We must set up a university campus that is globally accepted nothing to do with all this Ministry of Education or the MQA, totally independent, totally out there, virtual uh, university. And uh, <clears throat> we must build a new crop of uh, uh, graduates uh, from this. And then my vision of a township, we have a township of 10,000 inhabitants where you can go in and you can even go to any houses of worship to interact with people without anybody coming uh, to say, you know, you're not supposed to do this and, and, and all that. And this township resort, meaning that it is owned by the people rather than it is the normal town under the municipality, but it is a, a, a place that is truly Malaysia. And if we can have it uh, in, in, in one place and I could actually uh, spread the seed of what I call the new Malaysia. Now, in conclusion, uh, our present Malaysia is, uh, is sick and dying. Uh, for me, it's already dead. Um, so we must let it go and not confront its own sick and outmoded ideas of society, decency, and freedom. Well, we can still confront, but we spend less energy on that. We spend more energy on rebuilding our new Malaysia. Our fate lies within ourselves. Rebuild this country in the way that we want. No, nobody to go and argue against. No, no. Uh, 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 political parties to argue, we just do. Only by changing first ourselves and those close to us that we are responsible for, then and only then the new Malaysia will overshadow the present one.
Park Minister Fuller says, don't fight an idea, create another idea and, and build it up until it eclipses the old one. We must make sure that the present Malaysia of corruption, bigot bigotry, ignorance and extremism is equipped in due time by our own constructs of compassion, dignity to all, humility and the dynamic ideas of creative but meaningful enterprise. Now I'm happy that in the pandemic, in the flood, all the races, all the cultures, all the religions help each other. But mind you, it will not last. Once the flood recedes, once the pandemic is over, then we still go back to this uh, uh, single race and single religion dominance, and, and that will destroy us all. May Allah save Malaysia from its present state and into a new being of Malaysia Baru by the citizens, for the citizens and of the citizens. And so with that, uh, I end my, my lecture on the idea of religious liberty and a social policy, uh, which has the single message that it is up to every single one of us uh, to change ourselves, those around us, uh, so that we could have a new Malaysia on our own without too much uh, having to go through uh, or spending energy uh, doing the thing that we have done for 20 years, which is confronting uh, the establishment uh, too much. So thank you very much.